Yeah, yeah, this is T Nasty, and I got another dope video for y'all, man. I'm trying something new on the channel. I'm actually reviewing WWE Fastlane 2023. As y'all may know, I'm a big WWE fan, so I want to kind of, if y'all want me to continue to do this, man, all my loyalists, man, let me know in the comment section if y'all want me to continue to uh, react to or review PLEs from WWE. And this PLE kind of upset me a little bit because I had high expectations for this uh, PLE. <sighs> Let's just want to get to the matches, man. I don't want to even talk about it much. Uh, the first match, uh, Jimmy Uso, Cody Rhodes versus The Judgment Day. Now, this was a great match, right? I love the match. It was, like, probably the best of the night, honestly. <laughs> it, it really was. But uh, I didn't expect the outcome, bro. I really didn't. Like, the outcome shocked me because I didn't expect The Judgment Day to lose these tag titles. This soon because they pretty much just got them right, and they actually need to start splitting the tag team championship belts for me. You know? We don't need to be undisputed because what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep bouncing new tag team champions, they're gonna hold two belts the whole time. I'm like, no, let's have the Raw champion tag team championships be on Raw and have the SmackDown championship be on Raw, and we split the difference. And we, if you want to. Create new belts, do that like how you did the, the rest of the titles. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to be undisputed no more. They need to create matches to where, like, they defend them on Raw. If you defend them on Raw, you win it, uh, the Raw Tag Team Champions, and whoever can continue on SmackDown with those belts. I, and this is like the perfect time to do it because Cody obviously wants to go to SmackDown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we can get Jay feuding. With the bloodline in SmackDown with those tag team championships, they just need to lose the belts. I know it's kind of hard to say, like, "Hey, hot tag team, you lose the belts." Like Judgment Day, I, I can't believe they lost those belts, honestly, bro. Because Judgment Day is like hot, hot. They really hot, hot. But as far as that match right there that goes out of ten, out of ten, I would give that match. Uh, ooh, the way they did everything with the interference and stuff, and it still was. Oh, and that that finish that finish was amazing. Like that that uh, that one D variant. <laughs> I really love that, bro. I love I love the way they did that, bro. It was awesome. I will say I would get that match uh, out of ten a seven point five, and that's pretty high for my standards, bro. Honestly, a seven, that's that's damn that's damn good. Uh, LWO Carlito defeats Bobby Lashley in the Street Profits. Now, my problem with this match right here was why not just have Carlito come out initially, right? What what was Carlito doing in the back? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did he come late? Because nobody explained that. Did he come late, or we just sitting in the back just waiting as a surprise, like an advantage with the LWO? Because and plus, this match was like sloppy. Uh. Uh, your boy Montez Four has been extra. He was like being super animated and it just, bro. Like you got Bobby Lashley, right? Bobby Lashley is like a serious wrestler, bro. He's a serious character in the WWE. Serious, right? There's no BS, balls to the wall, big guy, or to push you through the wall type of dude, right? And you got Montez Four being all silly and animated, bro. Too animated. I don't need that from him, bro. Dog, they need to talk to him. They really need to talk to him about that. We don't need you being extra animated, bro. He dropped the ball when it comes to that, bro. Like, the faces he was making, and he had been all loud and goofy and stuff like that. We don't need that, bro. Even even when he was selling, it was just it was just too much, bro. It was way too much, bro. It's way too much talking, way too much animation. We need you to be serious. Like, uh, like even when he was trying to make like, the, 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 uh, the serious faces, it was like, Way too much, bro. I, I have a real, I had a real problem with Montez Ford in this match, bro. And them, uh, I, I just don't understand why Carly was in the back the whole time, right? And then you know what? Been awesome though. If he came out to his original, not, well, not his original theme music. If you want to switch his theme music, that's fine. But you got to put that. 
I spit in the face that people ain't cool. <laughs> you had to put that in there. You know that pop you in the guy if you, that, that happened. It was kind of predictable though because a lot of people expected Carlito to come back. And hey, Carlito looks good, man. You can tell he's been in the gym. His ring work, the little time that he was in there was Chris. I loved it. Right? But I just hated how sloppy the match was in the beginning. And I I, I hated why did it take Carlito coming out? They, they didn't never explain that. They, they, his plane was late or whatever, bro. It's just that he came out super late. But his forward was, was like been annoying and the match was kind of, you know, sloppy. It really was sloppy. It's like they never wrestled each other before, bro. It just like it was terrible, bro. Like it, it was really bad, right? So that match right there, the Carlito surprise kind of bumps it up a little bit, but I will get at a a five. Honestly, it was, it was that bad for me, right? Then the next match, Eosky versus Oscar and Charlotte Fair, Flair. Now my main problem with this match was. Oh, not, not like the match with Oscar and Eosky on uh whatever show that was Raw, I believe, right? Should have been this PLE. Should have been on this on this uh this this event right here, Fast Lane. I would enjoy that, right? And they say Kyrie Sane's back, right? It'd have been a perfect time for her to show up. Japan, 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 boom! Great story right there. My problem was Charlotte Flair being there. Charlotte doesn't have to be in every damn uh, women's title match. She doesn't, bro. I I didn't understand this one, bro. Like, why is why is Charlotte here, right? Why is Charlotte here, bro? She does. It it just seemed like it was, it was such a bad fit. Even the audience kind of agreed because they was booing the hell out of Charlotte, bro. <laughs> It was kind of pissed off. It was pissed off at Charlotte, which was supposed to be, I think she's a baby face at this moment. And Rue for Hill, Eel Sky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She had no business. It, no, the match was so sloppy, bro. It, 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 it annoyed me so bad, bro. It was so sloppy, bro. I want to give this to three. It was that bad. The outcome, I love, right? Because Eel Sky, I felt like she should win the title. I, I kind of like the ending in the match. Well, kind of, right? Kind of like the ending in the match. But I feel like Charlotte didn't need to, didn't need to be there. And I, I feel like she kind of recovered from the miss too soon. Because I remember, remember when Bianca Belair took the miss, she sold it and she was down for the count. They had to take Bianca Belair to the back and still attend to her while she was oh, suffering from the miss. You mean to tell me? Charlotte can take the miss in the beginning of the match and come back in like two minutes later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dow played the hell out of the miss, bro. It's just, bro, it, that annoyed me, and I want to get that match of three, bro. It, it had certain spots that I was kind of impressed with, and I'm kind of glad EO won. So that's the only reason why it's getting a three, bro. Honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Terrible match, bro. It was so sloppy. It was like you could tell it was like a language barrier because it it was just a mess, bro. In the next match, John Cena and L.A. Knight, yeah, <laughs> versus the Bloodline. I had a feeling. I already knew the outcome. It was predictable, right? I just knew it. It was. By far the second best match on the card for me, for me, my opinion, right? It was John Cena getting his ass beat the whole time, and you know what I'm saying, wait for the hot tag, and I, I really enjoyed that, bro. And the hot tag came, Ellie and I electrified the crowd like always. Dude, this was a pretty good match, bro. It, it kind of leaves you. For Friday, right? Because Roman Reigns is supposed to come back in Tulsa. So, it kind of, uh, you wonder, like, who's who's Roman Reigns going to lash out on, right? Is he going to lash out on Soul Scoil for 
teaming with his brother, or you go uh, lash on uh, Jimmy for interfering in Bella and business. It's a great story to be told in this one. I kind of loved. I enjoyed it. It was predictable. So if I was gonna give it a grade, I can't give it a seven point five like the the first match. But I'm gonna give it a solid six point five. Great match. A little drawn out. Cena was awesome. LA Knight was awesome. It's just a great match, man. I, I really can't call it. 6.5 is like... Mm, 6.5 is great. It was a great match. Was it like... WrestleMania worthy? You know? No, it wasn't. But it was like... It, it's tension on the storyline. And I kind of enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm going to see where it goes from here. I can... If I ever revisited it, and the storyline was awesome after this this whole matchup and stuff like that, if the storyline if the storyline matches it and extends it and makes it great, then I can come back later and get this match a, a better grade. But the storyline has to it has to lead up to something. This match has to lead up to something for, with the storyline for me to give it a higher grade. But but six point five, it was very solid. You know what I'm saying? My standards, bro. It's not like it's a five star match or whatever, but it's, it's, it's pretty solid. Next match, it was Seth Rollins and Nakamura, Shisuke Nakamura in the last match, bro. Honestly, I'm not even a lot of y'all. I already knew the outcome, so I didn't watch. Them. <laughs> I, I kind of fast. It was kind of getting kind of late, and I kind of fast forwarded through most of it, bro. I just wanted to see the ending. Uh, it's so predictable. Like uh, you can't you can't sell me on Seth Rollins' back being hurt, 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 hurt. Then Shinsuke's second opportunity at this championship, and you not give it to Shinsuke. Seth Rollins is a hell of a wrestler, bro. But come on, bro. Shinsuke being a he's been loyal. He's been with the company for a long time. Give the man the championship. Honestly, it's not going to hurt Seth Rollins if, if Shinsuke beat him right here, bro. Then you can use Shinsuke as a transitional, transitional champion. You know what I'm saying? You can have Shinsuke hold a belt into like these bigger PLEs and have him lose. Why is Seth Rollins handcuffed to the championship, bro? And I, I get why they're doing it with uh, Roman Reigns. Because Roman Reigns, they they trying to do bigger things like he held the title for such and such amount of time or whatever. It sucks that he's not on TV, but I really don't know what the hell he's doing. Is he doing a movie or what? But like Seth Rollins can lose his belt, bro, and Shinsuke can be a transitional champion for the bigger PLEs up to come, like Royal Rumble and uh, the the Chamber and you know WrestleMania coming up and all this other stuff, bro. He can lose the belt. He could be that transitional champion. So why is Seth Rollins holding on to it, bro? It's not going to hurt his legacy at all. That's the reason. That's the reason why I kind of fast forward because I knew, I knew that, that that last spot was crazy, it was amazing. But I felt like it wasn't worth the ten. You know what I'm saying? The Falcon Arrow on the table was an amazing spot, but I felt like it wasn't worth the ten count. Me personally, it just, man, it just sucked, bro. It's, I felt like self because he already beat him, so it's not like like oh, self can lose this title at any time type shit, right? Self beat him already, so if self losing this situation, boom, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a big, it wouldn't be a bigger hit, you know what I'm saying? Because he already beat Shisuke, so it'd be like a one and one thing. How Shinsuke win right here in this situation and make Shinsuke a transitional champion, bro? Then somebody else who's worthy, like uh, maybe like a, if you want to have Damian Priest cash in later on or Cody win it from Shinsuke, make a bigger PLE for WrestleMania or so many, or you had uh, Jay win it from Shinsuke to make a bigger PLE, bro. You, Cody. J, uh, LA Knight, they're up and coming, bro. So eventually, you gotta get one of these dudes a championship, bro. One of these dudes, right? 
and like we all know the belts technically the belts plural Roman Reigns holding is the, is is really because the, the real heavyweight championship belt just feels like <laughs> an intercontinental or U.S. championship to me, bro. Because you you made up a belt and gave it to Seth Rollins, while Roman Reigns still Raw and SmackDown championship. You know what I'm saying? That was silly. That's a story for for another video, bro. <laughs> because technically. Roman Reigns is still a Raw and SmackDown champion. And you just made up this real heavyweight champion for what reason, bro? Like, they could have made Roman lose one of those belts and he still could continue the street as a champion without making this fake ass championship. You know what I'm saying? But I hope y'all enjoyed the video, man. Uh, let me know in the comment section, bro, if you want me to continue reacting to uh, or reviewing WWE. PLEs or hey, even Raw and SmackDown. If you enjoyed this tape, this your boy T Nasty Man. Holla at your boy, and I'm out.